Welcome back. You're tuned in to Bazaar Morning Call. Well, our entire research team is standing by with CNBC TV teams. Top stocks you need to track. But let me go first on Vedanta since the big deal was announced post market hours. Vedanta, they have announced the demerger of their diversified business by unlock, and they believe it will unlock significant value. So now, if you have a Vedanta limited share, well, they're saying you'll get another five more. So in total, you'll have six uh, entities. The Contribution in terms of an EBITDA for the last year, well, that should break up for you. Vedanta Limited, which houses Hindustan Zinc, gets bulk of its profitability from there. So that's obviously the largest constituent, followed by aluminum as well as oil and gas. How does it help the Vedanta group, though? You know, they get the flexibility to unlock value for investors. That's what they have said. How is that possible? They can either sell one particular asset or they can bring a strategic investor in any one of those assets. And from their perspective as well, it'll be tax efficient. Otherwise, they would have to sell the asset then pay a dividend, so they'll, it'll be double taxation. One is on the dividend, and then they'll have to pay long-term capital gains as well. The promoter, Vidanta Resources, though their debt problem doesn't get resolved with this, they have big payments that are coming up, close to $1.3 billion in the second half of this fiscal. And in the next year, it's nearly around $3 billion. So in total, they have to pay more than $4 billion in terms of their debt. So in the near term, it's some bit of breathing space for them, but the debt problem doesn't get resolved. And if you're looking at the promoter stake, it went from 50 to 70%. And in the recent past, well, they've sold close to around 6% equity as well. So it starts in the green, but from there, we'll have to see how it goes. In fact, in just a while from now, we'll have Vikas Singh of Philip Capital who'll be joining us to give us his view on this big development. Okay, well, uh, that's the <clears throat> big one. And uh, we'll spend a fair bit of time between now and market opening and beyond as well talking about this important story. But uh, there are more stocks uh, <clears throat> which Nigel looks at. Ultratech, Coal India, NMTC, all have got news flow. Nigel, take it away. Well, talk about having a good holiday and then, you know, have so much, of, so, <laughs> so much of news flow. It was difficult last evening. Well, let's address the news. I'm looking at these three stocks and all three of them should certainly open up in the green. First up, Ultratech Cement. The volumes of the past quarter, the India business was up by close to 15%. You plug in there, you know, even the Middle East operations and the total volumes were up by close to around 16% on a year-on-year basis. Jeffrey says that in the first half of the year, the volume growth is 18%. They're estimating 12% for, for the entire year. So clearly, as of now, the run rate is ahead of what Jeffries is estimating. And in a seasonally weak quarter, on a higher base, the capacity utilization level is moving up. So green on Altitech Cement. Next up, NMDC. They have hiked prices by around 250 rupees per ton for October. Uh, we're getting source-based information coming from Steelman. And now the prices will move up both on lumps as well as fines. What are the factors at play? Odisha index, well, out there, I know fines had gone up, so that's why the street was sensing that. The pellet prices have been good, which could read well for Godabri, Par and Ispath, as well as Sarada Energy. And also, there are talks that another price increase is coming about for steel. So that's why these guys, you know, they have, uh, they have that cushion to go ahead and increase uh, prices. So that's NMDC. That should open up in the green. Coal India. The performance continues to look encouraging. The offtake for the past month was up close to around 12%. Year to day, it's up close to around 8.5%. And they're saying everyone's worried about the power supplies, the supplies of coal going to power units. In the first half of the year, it's gone up by close to around 10 million tons odd. So that reading is positive. So all these three stocks, I'm looking out for them in the green. There's some news flow, though, coming on Bharti Airtel. Sonal joins us to tell us about that. Morning, Sonal. Good morning, Nigel. Well, yes, Bharti Airtel will be in focus because they have put out a press release and that's where they are saying that it has over 50 million unique 5G customer, or customers over its 5G network. Uh, the 5G customers or subscribers, they have expanded from 1 million to 50 million within 12 months itself, according to the company. Airtel 5G Plus services, now they are available across the country in all districts in India versus the guidance that they are given earlier of March 2024. So that's definitely a positive here. Total subscriber base as of... Is, as of uh, uh, quarter one of FY24 stands at 338.5 million. So some positive read through from this data for Bharti Airtel. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> thanks very much uh, for that, Sonal. Well, more uh, in terms of uh, business updates that are coming through, Indusan Bank and uh, Federal Bank both put out their pre-quarterly updates. Abhishek is standing by with uh, details on both. Abhishek, morning. Morning, Prashant. So if you take a look, the business momentum for lenders remains strong, especially the private lenders. However, all of them are losing out on the CASA ratio or the low-cost deposits. So to talk about interest in bank, the CD ratio or the credit deposit ratio is at 12-quarter high. CASA ratio is at 25-quarter uh, low. So deposit momentum are pretty much stable at 14% YOY and about 3.5% sequentially. CASA ratio is at 25-quarter low of 39.4% when compared to 39.9% in the previous quarter. Retail deposit, that 
contraction remains strong, uh, growing at 21% YOY and about 4.3% quarter on quarter. Advances growth pretty healthy at 21% YOY and about 4.5% sequentially. CD ratio is at 12 quarter high of 87.5% versus 86.7% in the previous quarter, suggesting that the net interest margin could remain on the healthier side. For Federal Bank, the CASA ratio is at 14 quarter low. However, the business momentum on a sequential basis remains strong. Our deposits are up 23% YOY and about 4.7% sequentially. CASA ratio is at 14 quarter low of 31.2% when compared to 31.9% in the previous quarter. Customer deposit or the retail deposit, you may call it, uh, has grown at 19.6% YOY and about 4% sequentially. Advances growth pretty healthy on a sequential basis are growing by 19.5% YOY and about 5 percent sequentially. Calculation shows that the CD ratio uh, might have declined on a YY basis but improved on a sequential basis. Back to you. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for that, Abhishek. Well, let's hop across to Ekta. She's here to tell us about a couple of these pharma names. Morning, Ekta. Morning. Well, I'll start with Biocon. I expect the stock to probably see a little bit of red today. That is because Boehringer Ingelheim, the German company, has launched the interchangeable biosimilar version of uh, Umera, which is basically a biosimilar used for arthritis. It's a huge product. It had around $18.6 billion of sales before losing exclusivity in 2023. And uh, this particular drug has been launched by Boehringer Ingelheim at an 81% discount to what is available in the market currently. So this is going to be a negative or a sentiment negative for Biocon because they launched their version in July 2023. Around eight companies have already launched the drug or are expected to launch the drug in the US markets. And hence the competition is rising with a lot of price competition as well. So that could probably impact Biocon. Estimates are that Biocon can make up to $150 million from this drug with 5% market share by FY25. Suven Pharma, I expect that stock to be in the green because Advent has completed the acquisition of Suven Pharma. They acquired 50.1% for 6,313 crores. They're going to be triggering their open offer soon. They've mar year marked around 3,276 crores for that. Advent has now appointed a new board and management. The executive chairman is the ex-GSK head, A. Vedahish. Uh, and uh, we have Venka Justi, who is the Suven founder, who will be on the advisory council. So I expect that stock to probably be in the green today. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for that. Well, Sonal is back with us to tell us about some more auto sales numbers. Uh, Sonal? Uh, well, yes, let me start with Maruti because September sales were below estimates. Uh, low single digit uh, growth is uh, what is seen in September sales. Total sales up 2.8%, export sales up 5%, domestic sales up 2.5%. But these sales are lower than what Nomura expected at 1.87 lakh units in the month of September. Uh, if we talk about M&M, that was a mixed back where we saw very strong SUV sales. However, tractors showed weakness. So total auto sales were up 17%. And in the UV segment, the company recorded higher sales for the third consecutive month, which was up 20% on a YOY basis at 41,267 units. Uh, in terms of tractor sales, they continued to be under pressure. They were down 11% on a YOY basis. However, their Bolero Max pickup truck across the 1 lakh unit mark this time around, and it has seen the fastest pickup across the categories that the company has seen. Aisha Motors saw a decline of 4% on a YOY basis in their September sales. However, it was in line with Nomura estimates, or so slightly better there. CV sales were up 8. 6% on a YOY basis. Hero Motor saw sales higher than Nomura estimates. Total sales were up 3.2%, uh, which are in line with Nomura estimates. Domestic sales were higher as well, and so were export sales, which came in at 16,710 units. Again, TVS Motors, the numbers were higher than what Nomura was estimating. Total sales were up 6% on a YOY basis, higher than Nomura estimates. Motorcycle sales were up 10%, and scooter sales, they were up 8% on a YOY basis. Lastly, Tata Motors, domestic sales were up 2%, and their total Total CV sales were up 12%, indicating a good trend continuing for Tata Motors. All right, lots of numbers there. Sonal, thanks very much for running us through. Uh, let's quickly recap our list of stocks to watch out for today. The ones that have positive news flow around them are Vedanta, Ultratech Cement, NMDC, Coal India, Bharti Airtel, Indusind Bank, Federal Bank and Subin Pharma. Stocks that have negative news around them are Biocon and uh, the auto stocks may open up mix as uh, Sonal just pointed out as well. Okay, all right. Uh, so that's the entire list. But Sudarshan joins us uh, to tell us about some more brokerage calls. He's been going through all of those notes. Sudarshan, what do you have for us? 
in the brokerage corner we have three stocks first one is mgl jeffries has upgraded to buy and target is increased to 1320 from 1100 per share it says lower gas cost and priority in allocation provide strong margin visibility over h2 fy24 and 25 jeffries has also raised fy24 25 earnings estimates by 6% and 27% on higher volume and margin estimates Second one is Shiram Finance. MS has written on it. It has an overweight call with a target of 2200 per share. It says company has increased loan growth guidance for FY24 to 18% from 15%. Also, festive season in October, November and agricultural harvest should aid the demand. Company expects 16% YOY AUM growth in FY24. Last one is Concord. Jefferies has a buy call with a target of 825 per share. Railways has levied 10% busy season haulage charge hike on container traffic effective October 1, 2023. Jefferies says 10% hike will have limited volume impact and cost pass through should be seen over one and two months. Also, rail coefficient improved in August and Exim rail volumes rose sharply at 20% YY. Okay, so Darshan got that. We'll keep those stocks on our radar as well. Thank you for it. Let's now talk commodities. And Manisha Gupta is joining in with all the action after that three-day weekend. Manisha, so we are celebrating the fact that oil has cooled off. But you tell us, what's the top of mind for you? Oh, well, absolutely. Uh, you know, a three-week lows coming in for the crude oil prices. That has happened because of the profit-taking. Uh, we've been saying that it is overbought, but the momentum has been on the higher side. But with the contract expiry, we saw the crude oil prices coming off. More importantly, there also is the OPEC meeting, which is on 4th of October. And then the markets are looking at higher supplies coming in from Turkey. And Saudi Arabia also has been saying that they might ease supply cuts there. A very sharp decline is what we are working with in terms of metals as well, especially gold prices trading at a seven-month low with the dollar index trading at a 10-month high. There is pressure that has come in for silver. Most of the base metal prices in Asia have started on a weaker note as well. Mm. All right, uh, <clears throat> Manisha, thanks very much uh, for that. Uh, so that's uh, commodities. We'll keep coming back to that. That's a big one. We'll take a quick commercial break here. Nishal Maheshwari of Centrum Broking will join in uh, for uh, some fundamental stock analysis. Later, we'll connect with Vigash Singh of Philip Capital to talk about Vedanta's demerger plans. Stay tuned.